Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge. So I thought I would show you the finished project as I know the terrain um, sort of event has ended. So I wanted to whiz through as quick as I could and get everything to a kind of finished state. So I'll just talk you through the bits that I've done since the last video. And in the last video, we did the lights in all of the buildings and also painted the buildings again with super simple techniques using the airbrush, dry brushing and some just simple contrast colors to get them to this state so as you can see uh, the little finishing touch i did do to all the buildings is i've added little uh, smoke plumes to them so that they look like the chimneys obviously have fires or something beneath them uh, and these are smoke and this is very simple this is cotton wool with a little bit of black spray black contrast actually through my airbrush uh, look i'm no i'm no expert at making this sort of stuff look like realistic smoke um, but it does the effect it looks like there is some sort of uh, smoky effect coming out of the top of the chimneys it just adds a little bit to the table um, as you're doing it so on to the new things um, that were not done which is all of the sort of scattered terrain so for instance these campsites down here now these are models from uh, Mantix uh, terrain crates uh, just very simple brown plastic. Um, this is instance this little camp little camp area, and this was simply done by first of all priming with a grey, then a white from above, and then using a contrast paint. You can pretty much pick any colour you want through the airbrush to kind of give this effect. And obviously where the white is, you get a lighter red, and where the dark um, grey was you get a darker so you kind of get a nice effect on the tents i actually think it looks really nice it comes out quite well the contrast paints through an airbrush is a bit of a secret weapon you don't need to put anything in there contrast paints will go through an airbrush no problems whatsoever and uh, i think you get like a really nice coverage and a really nice effect for making um certainly for cloth and things like that so yeah there's two of these campsites one's here with the red and blue tents and then another one over here with the yellow tents and then where's some other little scattered terrain. So there was a little campfire, some logs over here. You had another campfire here. They're sort of roasting this chicken over a fire. And there was a little uh, axe and sort of a log there where they've been chopping down a tree. So those are the two campsites. And I think they come out really nicely. Again, pick any colours you want. You could have gone more with a sort of, you know, the browns and the greens to, to blend them in. But because this is Moonstone, I quite like the colourful look of them. So, uh, look, and you might not use these every time. And these could be used for any game, to be honest. Um, they were just some scattered terrain I thought I would add to the table just to give it a bit more interesting things going on. So next up, we did the bushes. So we had these, like, plastic uh, terrain um, edgings. These little bushes, again, from Mantix uh, terrain crates. Very simple. Browns and dry brushing from below. Greens uh, from above to kind of give you this sort of hedgerow. And I've got a couple of those dotted around the table. Again, just, just adding a little something. The same with these roadblocks here. The reason why I'm using these is because it marks out the edge of the table. This is a three by three foot square. Um... So I'm using these as table edges, essentially. So the rock lines you can see here, that that denotes the edge of the table. So this one's going to go here on the edge of the table here, just to show that um, you can't go past. And again, very simple, airbrushed, browns, light browns, bit of dry brushing over the top, nice and simple and works very well. I can't emphasize enough how well contrast paints go through an airbrush. If you're not doing it, use it, you'll get things done. And there's another one of those roadblocks over the other side as well. Now down here, we've got some other bits and pieces. We've got this hay bale, again, very quickly airbrushed. These barrels airbrushed again with a few different browns. The contrast paint actually has a really good brown selection. So you can get a lot of different tones of brown and then just dry and brush it over, dry brush it over, airbrush it over, and you'll get the effect you're after. Now remember, this is terrain, so I'm not going too crazy with any details. Um, more over here loads of this stuff just dotted around so the buildings don't look standalone they've got something going on with them again with the crates now the other bit we did was the market area so here these were from i think these are micro art studios i think this is from the volsung um terrain you can get but i essentially sprayed up again all of these crates and then put different color contrasts inside so that we could have different fruits and vegetables and because we're using an airbrush 
we've got some darker areas some lighter areas and it just makes it without much effort look interesting i really like the way the um apples or peas or whatever those are going to be have come out and of course we did the crate we did the um the wagon as well that's holding onto those so we, we've dotted those around there's actually quite a few of these so i stuck them in all sorts of places to make this kind of market store where as if they're unloading this this uh this wagon into the market store there so as we come around more we'll see all of the walls so again this is all really simple stuff so all of this again i believe is from the mantic terrain crates and we've just simply airbrushed it gray white from above and then used a, a gray contrast paint to sort of add some color and then some green in some places just to where there's moss growing up the wall or whatever so again super each one of these pieces of wall and a bit of dry brushing as well each bit of the walls took no time at all and there were some gates as well there's a gate over here we can look at if i can get it to focus on the gate it wants to look at the things behind it anyway you get the idea there it's a, just a wooden gate with some walls so you can create little blocking pathways and i think that's pretty much it so yeah you can see i've still got the candles in the buildings so you get a bit of light showing through the doorways um most of this was done i'll show you some of the materials i use um, i'm a big fan of the steinal res range of primers so the gray and the white what i tend to do with most things that i paint is i do a gray all over and then i do a white from above or 45 degrees to give me that zenith um simple brushes most of this was dry brushing i didn't need anything too accurate uh the, my favorite airbrush is the patriot 105 from badger there are lots of airbrushes out there, but this is without a doubt my favorite airbrush. It is an absolute workhorse, really easy to take apart, really easy to clean. Um, I highly recommend it. And then of course, just contrast paints. If you haven't got these, there are other contrast S type brands available, but I've always used contrast paints because I just find them to work so well. So again, and especially if you're gonna airbrush things, they go through an airbrush without any thinner, anything needed. No fancy, no fancy techniques, just crack on and do it. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is show you some bits of the table, put some music over the top, and we'll have a look around. But this is one of the first times I've had a fully painted table of terrain, including all of the little bits done. So uh, if anything, this little terrain project initiative got me to the point where I now have a fully painted table for my games of Moonstone. And of course, because it's all modular, we can create loads of different versions of this. We could use the tents. We could make a little campsite if we wanted to. Uh, we could do all sorts. So uh, the buildings can be moved around and we can play at night, we can play at day. We've got a scenario set up for almost every event. So uh, yeah, really happy with how this turned out. Now I'll do some zooming around and you can have a look at this little village we've created.